What's going on guys and welcome to another video. So we have bought my fiance a new car and this new car she absolutely loves and has kindly allowed me to modify it a little bit, which will all be to come. But that is great news because who doesn't love a modified car? So the first things first is I'm gonna show you her old one. Now there is a story behind this uh, and it has done as well, but here is the old car. Now, in all honesty, this car cost us £400 over two years ago now. Now, she had always wanted a Volkswagen Beetle. Now, she really wanted a classic one, but it was her first car, you know, getting used to the road. And we thought a classic one, maybe not the greatest choice as a first car. But that two years has passed and this thing is about ready to die. It runs and it drives okay, surprisingly, uh, for nearly 130,000 miles, but there is a huge list of problems with it and it is probably ready to go to car heaven. So starting from the top, the first problem is the central locking doesn't work to unlock the car. The windows go down, but when you try to put them up, It really struggles and nine times out of ten will not go up at all but obviously in true video fashion as soon as i want to film it it does work but the worst part of it is is the exhaust actually leaks exhaust gases inside the car so when it's warm and you've driven it for 15 minutes you get gassed out to hell and that is obviously not healthy so i don't think exhaust anybody likes exhaust gases um and likes breathing them in. If you did, that'd probably be quite weird. The MOT advisory list is about as long as my arm. When you go over a bump, the stereo turns off. The windscreen gets completely full of condensation on a cold morning. But with that long list of MOT advisories, it's not gonna be financially viable to repair that and keep it on the road for another year. So we're gonna sell it as a spares and repairs and move straight on to the new one. So, without further ado, here is my fiancé's new car. So this is the new car, um, arguably in the best and the worst colour all at the same time. So some of you might be like, why have you just bought the same car all over again? Well, as I said before, the Beetle was Leanne's dream car, uh, but the black one is the one she really wanted from day one. But that one obviously came up at £400. There was no point in spending a lot of money for a first car because, well, you saw the scratch on the bumper here. Um, and that kind of got her used to driving. But it is now time for the new one. Now, this is, well, obviously five years newer. It's had the facelift version as opposed to the pre-facelift version. And there's a few other nice bits about it. Most notably, the selling point for me was the 1.9 TDI PD105 engine. Now, if you know Volkswagens, um, you know that the PD engines are renowned for their reliability, um, tunability, and their economy. But the PD105 is not known for its tunability as much as, well, your, you know, Fabia VRSs or the PD130 engine. Now, just looking online, I think that is due to a few factors such as um, some of the bolts in the engine and the injectors are not up to scratch uh, to, well, be tuned. They tend to give way if you map this too much and just blow the engine. But that's not why we uh, went for the, well, 190 TDI. So, you know, I've obviously got the Golf GTI. That is not too great on fuel and with it being at 130,000 miles and an 06 plate, there's always something just, you know, a little bit 
wrong that needs sorting out. So my idea with this is we get the 190 out and we can use this car to get up and down the country whenever we need to see family or, you know, go traveling and do whatever. But the great thing about this is it has only done 84,000 miles, which for one of these engines is pretty much brand new. But no used car is without its bad points. And that gives us opportunity to mod and well repair at the same time. So let's talk about the bad stuff. The first thing is the front windows on both sides are tinted and they are absolutely knackered. The paintwork has been, well, very neglected. There's lots of scuffs all over the car and hopefully I can get most of this out with a good buff polish and mop with the machine polisher. The wheels are absolutely dead. I mean, look at the corrosion underneath the lacquer here. And it looks like there's an aftermarket black brake light here, which has been taped on with some duct tape and there's screws wedged down the side. I, what? And the back window has been limo tinted and there is a nice big hole in it. Aside from that and a few advisories on the MOT history, it's in pretty damn good condition. And obviously with only 84,000 miles, it's pretty much brand new. But what we're going to do today is we're going to get Leanne out. She's going to tell us what I can do to the car. Um, you know, I have my own plans for it, which she might not know about, but she can tell us what she wants to do to her car. And then we're going to take the brake light from the old Beetle, put it on the new one. So let's get her out and let's see what she wants to do to her own car. So we are inside Leanne's new car. So what are we going to do to it? What don't you like about this car? So, oh God, um, the wheels are really, really scuffed. So I really want to get them redone, but you found out that they were like the upgraded original versions. Yeah, the machine, fully machined 17 inch optional extras. So we're going to keep them, but sort them out. They're just a bit mottled, aren't they? Yeah, they've all got really corroded and they just need a, a good old refurb, I think. So we'll get them painted. Um, I mean, this is literally my dream car. I absolutely love it. But the black tin on the back, I cannot see through, so I can't even drive it properly. Yeah, you can see on the camera just how, like, I mean, it's daytime, but in night, you literally can't see it out of that window at all. So I think... We're gonna, are we gonna replace that? Take it off yeah. and replace it with something else? It does look really good, so I think we'll keep it, but maybe make it not as dark. That's about it for you, isn't it? Is there anything else we need to... You've got your flower, though. Yay! <laughs> so everyone takes these out of the cars, but... So it, it didn't come with a flower. We literally went and bought this from Primark and stuck it in the original stem. <laughs> hey! <laughs> so I think the first thing to do is to swap out that black brake light on this one with the red one from the blue one and Leanne is gonna help Yay. so let's do it and away we go it's a pretty simple removal on any car to be honest it's just a couple of torx bits in the back of the boot plastics here pull off the boot plastics and then undo the screws that hold the brake light into the car you can see it didn't take us very long at all just a case of getting those screws out and away we go then, of course, we've got to come over and deal with this other brake light. I mean, what the hell has gone on here? So let's just pull the tape off and let's see what we're working with. It's all smashed. This is actually a black light. Yeah. That's kind of cool, actually. But as cool as it is, it's absolutely knackered. And so, well, it's got to come off. Let me know what you guys think of the car in the comments section below. I'd love to know your thoughts. After that, just the same as the other one. Boot open, Torx bits out of the plastic bit and just pull it out. Now that the plastic boot trim's out, we can take a look at it. I mean, look at the state of this, guys. Whoever's put that broken thing back in has made an absolute pig's ear of it because, well, all of the clips are snapped in the boot here. So there's no way to secure that in anymore. There's no screws holding the light in whatsoever apart from this little weird one here that's barely even in. And then the icing on the cake. Just look at these screws. Like this one's not doing anything either. So what, what was the point? I dread to think what else has been done on this car to this state. I mean, I'm sure I'll uncover loads of things as time progresses. What the fuck? Jesus. 
That's stuck in there quite tight. So I think we need to it's push it. Duct taped on the other side. Ah, yeah. so if we peel off that gobbo tape. So what we think has happened is someone's tried to take this out before, tried to prise it off with a flathead screwdriver in a couple of places and just kept snapping it off, giving up and had to screw it back in. So we're gonna have to try and push it out from the other side, I think, and probably break it in the process. And so with a bit of ushering, we finally ended up getting it out. Honestly, this is absolutely tragic. Like every single thing that could be broken on this light is broken. Even the electrical connector, the lugs have snapped. Just whoever did this, poor effort, man, come on. But let's see if we can rectify the problem with the one from the Blue Beetle. So you can see Leanne just electrical taping the connector here as the lugs are snapped. But then we can put the other light roughly in position and then we're ready to push it down and screw it in from the other side. And these are the holes where the screws are supposed to go. We took the ones off the old beetle and we're just going to put them in this one. This took a stupidly long time because we had to get the screws in from one side while the other person was pushing it in from the outside of the car. So you can kind of get the screws in properly. But we got there in the end and then it's just a case of putting the blue plastics back in. We took the one from the other beetle because this one had all the lugs snapped. And so that is job, well, one of two completed. We now have, make sure there's nothing in the boot. One red brake light that now works and it's, well, OEM. And the other one, well, I'm not going to show you that because it is currently a bit bodged into there. But as this is just a spares or repairs car, I'm not too bothered. So the only other thing is I put Philips Extreme Vision in this. Um, and, well, I want those to go into there because they look really good. So we might make Leanne get those headlight bulbs out and put them in there as well. So, yeah, let's do that. But if you want to see that, you're going to have to wait for the next video. Sorry. This is literally just because, well, I found one thing wrong after another. Have a look at what's coming next. Next time. Every single bracket is missing. That's obviously not right. Oh my god, it's all chewed up. And... and so, thanks for tuning in, guys, and see you in the next one where we uncover loads more interesting stuff about this Volkswagen Beetle.